It's just over a week since the London attacks and the city of Leeds is still in a state of shock. Reeling from the news that this was home to three of the four suicide bombers. I've come to find people who knew Muhammad Sadiq Khan, a 32 year old school teacher, Shazad Tanweer, a 22 year old student, and 18 year old Hasib Hussein. Many of the Muslim Pakistani families that live in Leeds have settled here in the poor working class suburb of Beeston. These are the streets where the bombers grew up, where they prayed, and where they are thought to have planned their devastating act. So is this common now? There's, there's um, police on the streets everywhere? Yeah, no more. There is now, yeah. Yeah. Did you ever imagine this would happen in Beeston? Today, the suburb is under siege from both police and media. But some residents are trying to put on a happy face. This is the park where one of the suicide bombers, Shazad Tanweer, used to play soccer. But today, it's the site of a picnic for peace. Thanks very much. Well, good night. Down at the other end of the park, I met up with some of Shazad's friends having their regular Sunday game. But they're tired of reporters and are reluctant at first to be on TV. Oh, you do mind? Take pictures of him here. I'm not allowed to take pictures? You don't want to? I don't want to be on camera because I might end up in Guantanamo. Way. These lads have been more than happy to go out of their way a mile down the road, something to eat. get some dinner for themselves and the thought of you knowing that you're an Australian and everything. And after buying me lunch, they agreed to let me film. Kadir has a PhD, but he's unemployed. He wanted to tell me how his life has changed since the London attacks. Kadir, how did you feel when you caught the tube in London last week? It just felt a bit awkward. It felt like everyone was looking at you just because of the colour of your skin. I mean, I don't look particularly radical in terms of like having a beard and stuff, but you could, you could just see people staring at you. Um, I deliberately didn't carry a bag or anything because I just raised suspicions. So you could just feel the eyes burning through your skin. It's like, you know, is he, is he one of those people that would do that kind of stuff? Uh, I think they did it because of the racism happening around in Beeston and stuff. Because I think everyone suffers from racism around here, but I think one day they just thought that we've had enough and we're going to do something about it. And Fair enough, it's not the right right way to do it but they, in their minds they must have thought they were right. So you can understand why they were angry? Yeah, I can relate to them. H how can you relate to them? Like when people be racist in your mind you just want to get at them but every, most of the people just they only think it but these these have gone the extra level and actually d done the bombing. Eventually, the young men began to talk about their two friends, Shazad Tanweer and Muhammad Sadiq Khan. Arif is 26 and drives a taxi. Most of these lads were respectable lads. They had good backgrounds. They had, you know, the families were, you know, they were well respectable people in the area. So, I mean, I, that's not the reason. Mm -hmm. But that is something that these, the British community need to look at. Now, what, what makes a person do a, such a thing? I mean, you know, it is a big thing to do. I can't do it. There's people getting killed all over the world. There's, if you look in Palestine, there's people getting killed there. If you look in Afghanistan, there's people getting killed there. Innocent people. If you look in Iraq, there's people getting killed there. How come, how, Palestinians, I mentioned that first. How come the media doesn't go there and see what's happened there? Here, what's happened, we're all saying it's wrong that's happened. 57 people have died. It's a big thing. It's going to go down in the history books, first suicide bombers ever. But 57 people died, there's thousands of people dying all over around the world. So, you know, there's questions to be asked and we need answers. If you don't know our views, they're going to hurt. Why do they hurt? Because being our shoes for once, try being a Muslim man and getting to know what it feels like. So I like looking at so many other ways. It's just not right. The Blair government has said that those who link the London bombings to the war in Iraq are making excuses for the terrorists. 
But Kadir grew up across the road from Shazad and remembers both him and Muhammad talking about Iraq. They obviously made us aware of the things that were going on in Iraq, which we were aware of anyway. Um, so how did they make you aware of those things? Um, just, just, you know, just pointing out stuff that was going on, people getting killed in Iraq, people getting killed in Bosnia. I mean, there's common knowledge anywhere. So they were very political? Uh, no, I think they're just trying to put a point across the fact that, you know, Muslims around the world were not getting a fair deal. You know, it's, it's not a big um, a big thing to, th to wonder why. It's not a big conspiracy to, you know, to wonder what, what drove them to it. It's all there. It's all there, you know. This man, who didn't want to be named, is a construction worker around Leeds. They, they were general lads, just like ourselves, working, educated, financially secure. They were from financially secure families. What, what, what put it, what put the picture in the mind is the media. They're seeing their own brethren getting killed day in day out, you know, and it does affect you. So why, why do you think they were so angry? Well, look at the policies what have been going on. We're not just talking about these four. I'm talking about every everyone. I'm talking about myself here. Why are you angry? Why am I angry? Because six, three generations, let's say four generations, of, my, of our brethren, of, of, of humanity, not my brethren, no, of humanity. They, peop, they breed like you, yeah, the same as you, same as me. You know what I mean? I, I want to put them barriers down. Humans are oppressing humans in Palestine for three generations, right? All the lowest of the lowest crimes are happening there, which didn't even happen in... in Stone Age times, women could give birth where they, where, where and when their contractions happen, they give birth. They, they, they're in the same kind of conditions. Their contractions happen. They go to a checkpoint and they're refusing them to go past. Our religions getting vilified on the, on, on, on worldwide press, yeah, not regional. On worldwide news, day in, day out. Islamophobia is 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 a common thing now. It's open to be Islamophobic. It's not open to be anti-Semitic. You be anti-Semitic, you have a ton of bricks come down upon you. Yeah? Anywhere around the world, you have Mossad come knocking on your door. Why are you saying this? Why are you preaching this? But it's open to be Islamophobic now. And, and it shows, it drives people to extremes. And, you know what I mean? Eye for an eye and blood for blood, you know what I mean? That's what they were thinking. Why is it every time Palestinians suffer, America backs Israel up? Never once backed Palestinians up. Never once said that wall should come down. Barely knocked their walls down after generations, didn't they? The walls don't exist. No, you, End of day, it can doesn't justify the anything. Now? These can four I lads are just victims. And these young men don't just care about what's going on in Iraq and Palestine. What happened to them foreigners that arrived at Australia? And Australia didn't let them out, out, out of the ships and didn't even let them on their ground. Why is it that there's no terror attacks in Australia happening for Muslim people after we know that Australia's got strict foreign policies of how immigrants come to their country? We know this, I know this. In the meantime, one of the men went home to get a DVD he three wanted hours, to show me. Three hours of the true documentary of what exactly happened at 9 11. There's a flash underneath the aeroplane. And before that even hits the Twin Towers, it's already blasted the towers. How did that manage to blast the towers? Who is that plane belonging to? Well, if you go Honey in there, is 32 and has four sons. Happen, exactly he thinks that September 11 was part of a grand conspiracy to wage why, war why? on Islam. And when you watch it, it tells you exactly, and it makes sense. It makes a proper in the sense world of these young men, it's logical to believe that America was behind the attack the on the World Trade Center and that Osama bin Laden is just the fall guy. So if you come to the truth, why did America hide it? Why? Well, it's there, isn't it? Later that night, I hear reports that six people have just been arrested in Beeston on terrorism charges. So I head out to see what's happening. That it was near half a mile from Tempest Road and that it was in Beeston. Leeds is crawling with reporters and every new development is hot news. So again, speak up please, I can't hear you. 
I heard six people got taken out from there. You didn't see them being no, taken no. out. Eventually, the word arrives that the arrest had nothing to do with terrorism and the media interest quickly evaporates. The way uh, normal everyday people are driving past this main road, it's like they're scared. It's like they are scaring people. They're trying to get the voice around that. Every Asian who lives around here is a terrorist. Down the road, I meet some more and, uh, teenagers who knew Shazad Tanweer, but they don't want to be identified. Despite it being universally accepted that most of the London bombers were from Leeds, these kids don't want to believe that their friend did it. We don't believe that, because we're his friends and we went to school with him. We don't believe that, that they did it. We think that they're victims. He, he was a young lad. He took his backpack with him because he was, he's will, he was willing to spend three nights in a religious mosque in London. He took his rucksack, he took his you know, duvet, everything, sleeping bag, everything with him. No bombs in there. He went on the bus or the train, whatever they say, someone else did it. They're my beliefs coming from the heart. I don't believe that they were the people who did it. The bomb happened and it was terrorists in London who did it. Terrorism in London, not in Leeds. ID Do you guys for. agree with um, Abdul? Oh, if anyone's ID, they found three, four Asian men's ID, why blame it on them? They could have found any other guy's ID. You see the state on the bus, you saw how it ripped apart. How can ID manage to survive that? Exactly, you tell me. How can ID how can, survive how can that? Any form of ID, how can any form of ID still stay around? How did you find ID in the tubes? They could have found anyone's ID, or could have been planted. These kids believe that just because they are Muslim, the worst is immediately suspected of them. After the 9-11, yeah, they're just looking for any Asian man with a beard to blame for anything. There's like me personally, right. I like to wear my traditional clothes. I can't wear it no more. I can't wear it. No, if I'm going out of area, I can't wear this. If I wear this, it's not right. I'm going to be a terrorist or I might be a bomber. It's always suspicions. In front of they're taking the piss out they're of our religion now, you know what I mean? They're taking the piss. He's trying to knock it down bit we by bit, knocking Muslims, it down. But we love our religion as well. We love the country, but we love our religion. If somebody was to say, what do you love more, your country or your religion, we'd have to say religion. I was surprised by what the kids had said to me last night, that despite being born and bred here in the UK, they are convinced they don't really fit in because of their religion. In a Beeston barber shop, I meet up with community leader Aftab Ahmed. He is worried that this feeling of alienation can make young men susceptible to radical Islam. And they're not being accepted. They want to be British. They want to uh, support British in any way they can. Uh, they want to help Britain and they want to, you know, integrate into Britain. But the, the, the colour and the culture is, is, is against them. And they are vulnerable to these extremists who come and say, look, you know, we're going to shop around and we're going to recruit these people who are very easily and gullible. And they are very easy to find because they don't integrate into bad society. I do my best to integrate and uh, I have been integrating and up to a certain extent I've been very successful. But there are always people reminding me that I'm not, I'm not accepted. I, I, I personally don't want to go into details. But I have been told uh, that no matter what, what I do, I'm still Pakistani. You know, I'm still alien in their eyes. After speaking to Aftab, I went to the local pub just down the road from the barber shop. Inside, I was approached by Greg, who wanted to tell me what he thought of his Pakistani neighbours. Oh, they never asked us if we wanted them. We didn't want them, and we never have wanted them. And we ate them, and they ate us. Most of Greg's friends agreed with him, but they're worried that he could be prosecuted under Britain's anti-vilification law. He puts that on telly, you'll get done, you stupid. I will not get done. So what have you got to say, then? Well, shut up, then. They refused to let me film them. But surely this is just one incident. I mean, surely this no, no, doesn't... No. No, 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 that's wrong. We've always hated each other. 
and near main what they say down there, the ruggeds and whatever, right? We've always hated them. Hated the mortal sights on them. And they hate the mortal sights of us. I interviewed someone who's about your age, who's got the exact same accent as you, who would have lived here for as long as you, except his parents are Pakistani. Do you think, don't, don't you think you guys have something in common? Nothing at all. I have got nothing at all in common with him. Down the road from the pub, the police have just raided and cordoned off the local Islamic bookshop. Now the question tonight is, how much of a role did this shop play in their indoctrination? And it was written by seven people, one of whom was Mohammed Sadiq Khan. And in it, what it says is that uh, he is a youth worker... Julie's come out of her house to see what's going on. One of the bombers, Mohammed Sadiq Khan, taught two of her children at school. Unlike Greg from the pub, she'd always accepted the Pakistani community in Beeston. Well, he was a teacher at my daughter's and my son's school. He's just basically a nice guy. You know, it's just really weird, you know. But now, Julie feels betrayed. You just don't know to trust in the Muslim, in the Muslim Asian community anymore. Now I've got three young children at home, aged 12, 13 and 10. I'm thinking, you know, they're going to be in school one day and the school's going to go. Because there's Asian boys in the school, are they going to be took away by the families? My brainwashed and brought back and blown the school up for anything. You, know, you just don't know, do you? Is there any more in the area that we don't know about? You know, were there more of these people in this country, but they've only got three of them because they're the ones who did it? Are there going to be any more around Leeds, around Manchester, around any of the major cities in the country? You know, are there any more men or young boys out there to do the same carnage as they did over in London? In fact, the vast majority of young men I met in Beeston were quick to condemn the bombing. But on my third day here, I did meet one man who said he would be prepared to do the same thing. My taxi driver, a man of Pakistani origin who's lived here in the UK for 35 years, he told me he was happy about the London bombings. He said he agreed with what the men did and that there were plenty of others who felt the same way. He would not give me his name or let me film him, but he was very clear about the message he wanted to give. He said it's about time we did it to them so they know what it's like to suffer. On my last day in Leeds, I went to visit Dr. Hassan al khatib the chair of the Leeds Muslim Forum. Dr. al khatib I've spent the last few days around Beeston talking to the young men. And I was quite surprised to find out really how angry a lot, a lot of them are. Do you think that the community leaders realise what kind of what's going on? I think on? they do, but uh, it wasn't expected that they would be violent uh, to the level uh, as uh, what has happened in London. Uh, but this is quite expected. In general, youth are rebellion, you know, uh, in nature. I told Dr. Al Khatib that some of the local kids didn't believe that the London bombers had been the boys from Leeds. I was surprised by his response. But yes, because until now we haven't uh, seen the bodies of these four lads. Uh, how conveniently they found their credit cards and uh, their driving licenses. And all those people who have known them, uh, they speak very nicely about them. Is there any doubt in your mind that these young men did it? Well, I haven't known them myself personally. Uh, so I can only follow what the people are testifying uh, for them and against them. And so far, uh, all testimonies are in their favour. So that definitely throws doubt in the mind of every person. So perhaps they, they were set up? Perhaps, most likely, in fact. If one of the city's leading Muslims believes it's most likely that the bombers were set up, 
then how can the community's feelings of anger, suspicion and distrust be resolved? As I left the UK, Londoners were under attack again, and my trip to Leeds had left me with more questions than answers. <laughs>